for section nine, we'll be looking at functions, probably one of the most popular topics in math. Uh, also one of the most important functions are everywhere in math. So we're going to go ahead and look at the basics or not the basics, but maybe some refreshers. Uh, just a reminder, a function is a relation where for each X value, right? There's one single Y value, right? So, uh, we're going to determine whether the following are functions or relations. Uh, we have this first one here as a picture. Is this a function? And this one is a function, right? We don't have any, let me point out, we don't have any of these X values that have two arrows going out of it. However, if we take a look at this one here, well, this one is not a function because the five here, right here, it has two arrows going out of it. So X values can only have one Y value corresponding to them. So that's why this one is not a function. Another way we can see functions is maybe as uh, on a table. Is this one a function? Again, this one is not a function because we have two negative ones as the X values that have distinct uh, Y values. So this one is not a function. This one, however, we don't have any X's repeating, so this one is a function. Also, you might see functions as graphs. This one here is a graph of X squared. X squared, um, if you remember, you might have heard a vertical line test. If a vertical crosses your function more than once, then it is not a function. In this case, it only crosses it once at any given point, so it is a function. However, if we have something like this, well, a vertical line will pass the function more than once. Therefore, this one is not a function. This one is not a function. Now, what else? Well, functions, well, we can view them as an object that has X as an input, and then it'll spit out a unique Y. So you can even look at it as a machine. Here we have a function F in the machine. X goes in, Y comes out. Now, say for example, uh, we're to have a function where we square the value and then add one to it. How would you write that? You square the value, add one to it. Well, we could have f of x equals x squared plus 1 because we're squaring the value x and then adding 1 to it. So, for example, if they were to ask you what is f of 3, they're asking you if, you, if your x value is 3, what will your machine, your function, spit out? In this case, we will have f of x equals x squared plus 1. So, if we put 3 into the function, we'll get 3 squared plus 1, and that's equal to 9 plus 1, which is just 10. Right, so this specific machine looked something like this. That was our function here. 3 went into the machine, into the function, and it spit out a unique y value, which was 10. So those are the functions. Now, something that goes along with, <clears throat> along with functions are composite functions. So composite functions are functions composed is a function composed of another function. For the notation, maybe you've seen this before, we write this like this, uh, f composed of g is either written like this here or like this one. You might even hear someone say f of g of x. So a function composed of another function, what is that going to look like? That's going to look like, uh, well, suppose f of x equals x squared and g of x is 2x plus 1. They're giving us two different functions. And say they wanted f of g of x, right? f composed of g, composed of x. How will that look like? Well, 
First things first, we're going to plug in the g of x, right? g of x is 2x plus 1, so we replace that with 2x plus 1. And now we still have to apply whatever x is f of x is telling us to do. In this case, square it. So we're going to go ahead and square that 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1 squared is just 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. So that is the composition of f of g of x. Now, we could also do g of f of x, where uh, f of x is the argument of the function g. So this is actually going to look slightly different. Now, instead of plugging in here 2x plus 1, well, f of x is now x squared, so this will look like this, right? Instead of f of x, we have x squared. And now with this here, our g function is telling us to carry out 2x plus 1. So we're going to plug in, instead of that x, we're going to have the x squared. So we'll have 2x squared plus 1. And well, that just stays as is, 2x squared plus 1. All right, there's also inverse functions. An inverse function can be thought of as a function that undoes another function. So let me show you what that's going to look like. An example, suppose f of x is x over 2 and g of x is 2x. These are inverse functions of each other. Now, why are they inverse functions? If we compose the two, they're going to spit out what we call the identity function. In other words, just x in this case. Right. And notice how f of x, we're dividing x by 2 and then g of x, we're multiplying x by 2. So inverse functions pretty much will undo. You're dividing by 2. OK, I'm going to multiply by 2 to undo and then just give us x or more properly our identity function. And if they're inverse functions of each other, We'll also get x if we try g of f of x. If we try to compose them the other way, again, we're just going to get x or the identity function. Maybe you see the functions given to you as ordered pairs. So for example, if f of x are, is, um, is these four points, right? On maybe the line or maybe f of x is just these four points. The way the inverse is going to work is we just flip all the ordered pairs. So here two goes instead of y goes to x and one from x goes to y. And that's going to happen with each and every one of these. This one's going to flip. So then this one flips, this one flips, this one flips, and finally four flips. So 17 flips. That is what inverses do, right? Like undoes or maybe like opposite function you could think of it like that um, that's a bit informal but it's a way to look at it now say they were only to give us one function and they asked to find they're asking us all right find the other function find the inverse of the function that undoes it what would that look like well there's only two steps to it First is to flip the x and the y. Once you do that, all you have to do next is solve for y. And that'll give you your ident or sorry, your inverse function. So let's say they're asking us to find the inverse function of f of x equals x plus 3 over 2. How do we find the inverse? Well, let's just go ahead and look at our steps. We have our function, we're going to have to flip x and y. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll have x equals y plus 3 over 2. And now, as the step 2 says, all we have to do now is solve for y. So to solve for y, we'll multiply both sides by 2. Reason we do that is so these 2s can cancel out. And we're left with 2x is equal to y plus 3. 
Next, to solve for y, we'll have to get rid of that plus 3, so we're going to subtract 3 from both sides so that these can cancel out. And we are left with y equals 2x minus 3. In other words, the inverse of f of x is 2x minus 3. And this here is just a notation, notation for inverses. I'll write it over here, inverses, f of x, we say that its inverse is f negative 1 to the x. And that's not an exponent, it's just a notation. Those are the inverses. Now, how can we verify that they are actually inverses if f of x was x plus 3 over 2 and f, uh, the inverse of f was 2x minus 1. How can we check this? You can do the composition of functions, right? You remember? Or you could even try the other way around. And you'll notice that both of these will give you x and x. I leave the verification up to you. But that is how we check that they are indeed inverses of each other. With that said, go ahead and practice problems from your packet um, and go ahead and ask anything you like. That concludes our lesson for inverses and, well, for functions, really.